My name is Alistair Lee, and in this video, I'm going to walk through the process of creating a service inside of a data integration to pull back multiple records from a database table and use that data to pre-populate an adaptive form. Rather than starting from scratch, we're going to use a data integration that we created in a previous video. So let's begin here by logging into Adobe Experience Manager. I'm going to navigate first to Forms and then Data Integrations. I can see the data integration that I've already created called Database Connection. I'm going to select that and choose to edit this. This particular data integration includes two objects, a person object that has first name, last name, and email address of individuals within the database, as well as a passport object with an association between the two so that once we select an individual from the person object, we can grab their passport number. I'm going to modify this in a couple of ways. First, I'm going to look at the different schemas in my database and add a new table called dependents, which contains all of the dependents for the individuals in the person table. I'm going to save my changes before doing anything else and then choose to add a service. We'll use this get service here and click add selected. Now I'll save my changes once again and move to that services tab to configure that new get service I just created. So let's select that and click Edit Properties. Again, this get service is going to grab all of the different dependents associated with the person from the person table. So I'll we'll call this get dependents. We can give it a description. More importantly, though, we need to specify the output model object. So what is this going to return? And in this case, we want it to return dependents. We're going to choose to leave this return array on because one individual might have multiple children, for example. We want to bring all of those different records back. And then it needs an argument. By default, it's picking up the ID from the dependents table. But in this case, we actually want to pass it the person ID, not the ID associated with an individual dependent. So I'm going to choose person ID from the drop down list box here and select done. Click done over here and save my changes. We can test to make sure this is working by selecting the checkbox beside Get Dependents and clicking Test Service. And I'll choose our person ID of 1, should be John Cummings in our database. Click Test, and I can see that it's pulling all of John's dependents, all of his children in this case, as an array back to my test here. So this new Get Service is working. I'm going to close this. Before leaving this data integration altogether, though, there is one other change I'd like to make. In a previous video, we configured the read service for our person object. Let's take a look at that now. I'm going to unselect everything else. We'll select our person object and click Edit Properties. So we've got this read service. If I configure this, you can see that it's currently set to a literal with a binding value of 1. That means it's always going to pull that, that record with a person ID of 1 from the database. That's OK for testing, but obviously in production and in real use cases, you would need this to be set to something else. So let's do that now. I'm going to change this to request attribute. So we'll pass along the person ID as part of a web service or another call to our form. And the binding value is going to be set to whatever variable we'd like to call. I'm just going to call this variable ID. And we'll click Done. Once again, hit Done over here and save our changes. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to go ahead and test this, this model object one more time. And rather than specifying or hard coding a value of 1 in here, I can enter whatever value I'd like. So I can enter, for example, the number 2 and click Test. It will bring up a different record. So a small change, but important as we move from hard coding our values to passing those values as part of a web form. I happen to have a web form already configured. This is simply HTML. It's posting some data as a post. And we've got a object inside of CRX to take that and redirect it to the form. So we've got our new data integration created. This is called Database Connection. We've now got three objects in here, as well as our get service. There's nothing else I need to do here. Let's go and configure our form. We'll do that by unselecting our data integration and navigating to Forms and Documents. Rather than starting from scratch with my form, I've got a form that's already been started that I can use for this particular example. 
We're going to select it and choose to look at the properties first, though, because the first thing we'll need to do is associate our form with our form data model. To do that, I'm going to navigate to Form Model in Properties and then choose Form Data Model as our form model. And then I can select from one of the form data models that are available. And in my case, I've only got the one. It's the one that we just edited called Database Connection. So I'm going to select that and click on Save to save these changes. With that done, I can now go into editing mode by clicking on the Edit button. And as you can see, it's a fairly basic form right now. It's really just made up of two different sections, one for our customer and another for our dependents. But we don't have any fields on this form. We need to start populating it with some uh, some fields. And rather than pulling those from the Components tab, I can once again leverage my data model objects to populate this form. So you can see under Data Model Objects, we've got all of our person information, our passport, as well as our dependents. So I'm going to simply start dragging and dropping these different fields onto my form. Once that's done for our customer, I'll move over to Dependents. And we can do the same thing here with first name, last name, and relationship. And you can see I'm putting these into a subform. To make our form dynamic, it'll automatically grow or shrink based on the number of dependents for our customer. So we've got our fields set now. We'll need to call our service. And I'm going to do that by going back to the Customer tab. I'm going to move Person ID right up to the top, because that's the field that I'm going to use to call our service. So with that selected, I'll choose to open my Rule Editor. We're going to create a brand new rule with person ID. We'll set this to when person ID is initialized. We'll also just make sure it's not empty. And we'll use and as our operator. And then we're going to call an action. And in this case, the action is going to be to invoke a service. So I'm going to select invoke service. Then from my drop down list box, I see that get dependence service that we created over in our data integration. So I'll select Get Dependence, and it needs some values. It's got an argument of person ID, so we'll need to pass it a person ID. And then it returns an object of dependent. That includes things like first name, last name, and relationship. So to populate all of these, I'm going to open up the form objects and functions in my sidebar. And we'll use the values from our form, section 1, to populate person ID. So it'll grab person ID from our form. And then we'll use the customer dependent section to automatically populate first name, last name, and relationship. And as you can see, I can simply drag and drop these fields over to populate them as part of my rule editor. Once that's done, I can click on the Done button and close my rule editor. We're almost ready to test our form. Before we do, though, I want to make sure that I set up a pre-fill service. Right now, I've got the person ID selected. I want the parent of that. I want the form container. So I'm going to click on Adaptive Form Component and then choose to configure that. And here, one of the options I've got is to set a prefill service. I'm going to use the Form Data Model prefill service and click on my checkbox. With that now saved, we are ready to test our form. To do that, I'm going to use this HTML page. This is simply HTML that we set up to pass along a person ID value, as well as the name of the form we're looking to open to Adobe Experience Manager. So let's test this out. I'm going to use a person ID of 1 and click Submit. And you can see that's opened up the form we just edited, including the customer information. When I click on Dependents, I can see that it's pulled in all of John's children. Timmy is here, as well as Jessica and Mary. So that's how you can create a service inside of a data integration that pulls back multiple records and pre-populates an adaptive form. Thanks for your time.